shorten it down. And uh, I do this talk together with uh, Simon Sherry from, from Terry here. Um, so I will basically uh, introduce the, let's say, the general idea of the project, uh, and then Simon will um, go more into the details on the knowledge and information representation that we use uh, within our, um, our system, actually, that we are uh, targeted to develop. Um, I'm the coordinator, and uh, yeah, I have some words on the project. Uh, it's as you can see below here. Uh, now in the second year, uh, at the end of the second year, um, perhaps some of you have seen the demo. There was a demo uh, during the lunch breaks. Um, also, I think uh, today, if you like, you can choose it. Also, in the demo session, there was a demo for, uh, from from our current version of the system that we have. And um, yeah, you could perhaps some of you already get some impression here. So. Uh, the system is, um, as, as we call it here, a proactive uh, personal information management system that we are targeting for. Um, it's, uh, let's say, for my impressions, for a European, typical European project, we uh, are strongly targeting uh, to something which in the end is close to a real working application on the one hand side. On the other side, I think we, we have um, interesting and challenging, challenging uh, research uh, <coughs> Um, done in the project, so that's, let's say, a little bit of attention that we have, actually. Um, anyway, I hope that, uh, and that's the plan for in the next year, we will have a real running system that we can try out with uh, real end users. Um, okay, so I start with... Uh, uh, this again. <laughs> okay. Um, with introducing what it's all about, uh, it's... Uh, uh, the idea is, or the background, that uh, it's a system that is uh, able for a individual end user uh, to manage <coughs> aspects of his personal information sphere. So here you see the typical, let's say, uh, um, information that we deal with or uh, want to integrate and to, to access via that, like uh, personal documents, photos, uh, social information, context groups, and also context, so it's an important um, uh, part of it uh, that it should be a contextual system, um, for example, getting uh, information from from mobile systems, um, and this uh, then of course should also uh, deal with the system should deal with uh, these what I call here ecosystems. That is on the one hand side the services that a typical end user works with, like for example the social communities and other social uh, services or collaboration services. Uh, so actually, many of the use cases that we are thinking about. Uh, is about social networking, like you have it in, in a typical community. Um, <clears throat> and another important background kind of is, uh, are the devices, of course. So the idea is that uh, the system will basically be uh, uh, running uh, either in the cloud or on personal devices, but will be then accessible via, via the um, other personal uh, devices that you have, that, like in particular mobile devices. So that's the one background, I think that's at least as I understand it, quite close to, um, uh, to the information um, but kind of thinking that uh, in this community is. There's another, and that's also a little bit particular I, from my understanding for this project, another big part uh, and another also scientific community that we integrate in the project, and this is about uh, personal identity management, um, uh, the security aspects of that also, and uh, trust uh, management, so to say. So a uh, second, let's say, big part of us is that we uh, want to have a system in the end that is able to, to manage uh, several identities, uh, like account information, profiles, uh, the personal information that is uh, uh, at an external system, for example, or a provider, provider system by a service provider, for example, about the user. Um, and here, one, let's say, one uh, a specific motivation that we have uh, is that the user should be able to control different identities or partial identities uh, towards these to, towards different uh, communities or recipients of, of information from, from, from the end user. Um, which I think is, uh, let's say, at, at when we started the project was, uh, was an idea which was not in the, uh, let's say, in the typical, for example, social communities integrated, like, uh, but uh, in the meanwhile, uh, uh, in particular Google Plus, uh, specifically, uh, uh, had, let's say, as a unique feature, exactly doing this, the controlling uh, different information via the circles, for example, and uh, to different people. However, this, of course, is always one identity that you have, right? It's your main identity in Google, and, of course, the service provider has access to everything. That's another issue here. 
So we are, uh, I think, uh, let's say, not only one step beyond, at least conceptually at the moment. Uh, so the idea is that this, this could be really separated identities, right? That uh, should be able to, uh, to be federated and managed by the system. <clears throat> and I mentioned it, of course, uh, let's say also a big political motivation behind that is uh, the, uh, the privacy discussion, right, that we have, uh, that is, uh, the, the situation that uh, these user data at the moment are uh, used by, uh, by the service providers uh, in uh, doing their business, right? So there are business models based on profiling, for example. And uh, this is, of course, not uh, privacy ensuring. Our general idea is to have something which is under the full control of the user. Um, and uh, yeah, for, for that is uh, really, uh, yeah, as I said, privacy uh, ensuring. Uh, yeah, that's, so that was, let's say, the motivation. I think I already talked a lot about the project ideas. Um, this is the project. We are a strep. Uh, it's, we have um, uh, eight parties all together. Uh, NUIG as one of the main uh, technology and research partners in there, together with others like University of Siegen, for example. They are the uh, ones mainly uh, working about um, <coughs> privacy, trust, and security. Fraunhofer, we are from the HCI side and coordinators. And then we have a couple of uh, application partners uh, that will um, try out the system with their uh, customer bases or communities in the next year. Um, so again, I think I, I must say I have perhaps already uh, told uh, a lot of, of what is on this slide now. The idea is to have this central node, this system that supports the user in these respects. Uh, we called it the uh, uh, DME userware. Um, the idea is to have a personal service which is running uh, and hosted by the user. So the user is intended to be the host of his own system, right? Um, which is for that uh, uh, under his full control, despite the fact that perhaps there must be a uh, infrastructure service provider. That's another issue. But this, the application itself should should be under only the control of the end user. Um, this should integrate uh, with uh, will integrate basically with uh, with uh, different services. Uh, so here you see some, some logos of what we are at the moment targeting. The logos in the top are our application um, partners which have services into this direction uh, and below are some typical um, uh, services that we in our scenarios uh, are thinking about. However, the, the general idea is to have uh, a technology in the end that is uh, open to uh, as many um, services as possible. So at the moment we are supporting uh, integration with uh, Facebook and Twitter, as far as I know, um, and LinkedIn is planned. And um, yeah, let's let's say the, the current situation. Um, <clears throat> however, it's uh, uh, some of the functionality should be let's say in parallel to what you find in typical social communities on their platforms. So the idea is to have a decentralized communication between the nodes of DME of these DME personal services, um, and. Um, yeah, actually, uh, here simply the idea is to uh, to come up or to enable functionalities um, like uh, we have like messaging, for example, sharing profiles and, and stuff like that. Um, I should hurry up, I think. <laughs> um, uh, based on a decentralized network, uh, the the general idea of decentralized um, social communities, for example, is also something which is popping up at several uh, occasions. So there are several systems like the Aspo is one of the famous ones. Uh, which uh, go for a kind of similar approach, however, again, with this integration of digital identity from the, from the bottom, uh, I think uh, that uh, the, the approach uh, that is, let's say, some more basic. Uh, connection to services, I think I can skip this, I already this, uh, uh, mentioned this, and this again is something uh, about these uh, separate identi identities. We have here a concept developed within the system which we call service accounts. So the idea is that in the system manages different identities via these service accounts, which could be either a s account to an external system, like in this example here, LinkedIn, and that is an identity towards this system, or also multiple identities perhaps towards LinkedIn, right? But also the same basic approach having uh, separated and within one node then federated identities uh, could be would, will also apply within DME. That is, you also could use uh, different identities within the DME network. So the, the very bottom uh, two identities basically would be two pseudonyms and two identities behind that that uh, could be organized within the system. And just one last point. Uh, 
Behind that is the idea to avoid unintended uh, linkability of these identities. So on top of, let's say, this basic infrastructure, several identities, the idea is that the system will also be uh, an intelligent system able to um, somehow guide the user, perhaps recommend something uh, in order, for example, for several issues, but in order, for example, to avoid uh, unintended linkability between these, uh, these identities. Okay, last slide for me, and then it goes to, uh, the, uh, to Simon. Uh, this is uh, a, a, a rough um, architecture of the uh, system as it is. So um, okay. <laughs> you can see um, uh, the, 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 the central node, which is uh, the personal server, in this example, Quant's personal server, uh, connected to the other decentral, uh, decentrally connected to the other uh, personal servers of other users. And um, uh, why are service adapters as a, as a component uh, connected to, <coughs> to the external systems? And then, uh, perhaps last thing to mention here, uh, at the moment we uh, are targeting for uh, accessing this uh, personal service or personal server uh, from uh, simply a web interface and also a mobile interface. At the moment we have a mobile uh, Android client which is able to, uh, to go for that, so the system should be um, let's say controllable fully also in, in mobile situations like for example events events is one of our important scenarios. Okay, so for let's, let's say the general idea or some of the general ideas and now I would say I hand over to Simon who can tell you more about the semantic background in that. Okay, so um, <coughs> I think here I gave you already the uh, idea of the objectives of the project and um, <coughs> I'm going to a bit more uh, give you more insight about the uh, knowledge modeling, <coughs> knowledge representation, uh, the management of the information, and how we exploit it to actually uh, give the user value from it. So uh, the, the architecture is ontology driven, so there are a lot of ontologies that we need, uh, modeling the required um, domains. So uh, a, lot of a lot of you here will be familiar with uh, Nepomuk, which was um, another project which uh, had involved the use of a lot of ontologies. So um, what we did in DME, we reused those uh, ontologies, which are like standards uh, to represent information, and we extended and built on top of them to uh, represent the other domains that we are now targeted, but they weren't really covered. So um, this slide basically shows you an overview of the reused ontologies, plus some extensions that were required a bit over time as maintenance. And um, apart from these, uh, we also have a series of uh, ontologies which are part of the same, uh, same family, let's say, of ontology standards um, to represent these domains such as uh, user activity context, um, online um, <coughs> sharing and microposts, uh, presence, uh, devices, accounts, because we're extending the um, sources for personal information uh, modeling. Uh, user histories uh, for logging, for example, and also uh, things like uh, user-defined rules. Um, I will give you a bit more information about these. So, um, for first of all, uh, we have um, extended uh, sources for personal information sphere modeling. So, the idea is to integrate all this information and be presented in, uh, in a central uh, store, which is RDF and <coughs> history. So we have um, devices now, not just desktops. So we have um, smartphones, for example, and also online accounts. Um, we are modeling uh, user presence and context. So what the user is doing, their surroundings, the environment, and their activities um, to drive the intelligence that I will present later, the, the objectives that we have. Um, there's this uh, privacy and trust aspect as well. So we have um, more focused in this pro more focused in this project on how information that is represented can be shared and improved, more controlled, uh, more secure, and also user history. So um, we don't just keep information that is present in the user's personal information sphere, but we keep information that is uh, important that was uh, happening before. Um, and this has implications on uh, security, for example. What did I share with whom last week? Uh, what was I doing last week? Um, so this is something uh, that is given um, important, extra importance in this project. So this is a very um, generic view of how all the ontologies I presented as a list before uh, are integrated together. I don't intend you to see uh, much there, but um, 
the main concepts, <coughs> their only the main concepts are shown for the ontology, there is much more, and I show how they all are linked together, so the, the knowledge and um, modeling integration itself. Um, now I will explain how the ontologies affect not only the development of the system, but also um, the user interface. And uh, first of all, so uh, the, the, the architecture itself, so there's of course the first information model, which is a RDS store for the user. Um, the components themselves, so the components that all the partners are developing, they exchange RDF. So information is exchanged directly in RDF in most cases. And also the personal server to personal server communication, um, there is also exchange of RDF at that level too. So you can see how um, RDF and RDF exchange and ontologies are um, really have a, a big effect on the architecture. Um, also, of course, that um, brings us to this one, so the development of the actual system. Um, the developers of the Beam user were also work directly with uh, ontology uh, knowledge. Um, so we use RDF Reactor, for example. This uh, generates code from ontology so that developers can um, uh, integrate, uh, sorry, use the ontology modeling itself to, to uh, produce the, the, the components. And also we use, uh, for example, Sparkle queries a lot in between the components to retrieve information from the store and also from each other. Um, also the intelligent user interface, it's driven by the knowledge model by the ontologies. So, um, for example, this is uh, just, um, uh, let's say, main, one of the main dashboards of the user work currently in place. So, for example, there's um, uh, data boxes, which, we call, which are groups of personal information that has been extracted before from the user's uh, personal information sphere. And there's uh, items, so like sensors, so there's um, images, um, folders, documents, and so on. And this is covered by the information element uh, set at the bottom there. Um, there's things like groups and people, so that's the PIMO ontology. So <coughs> what I'm showing here is that like, um, you can see directly in the user interface which ontology is being used to, mod to model which data. Um, and I think I had the last uh, point here. So for example, the profiles are modeled by the uh, contact ontology. This was uh, mostly used from Nepo with some extensions to model uh, information that is extracted from multiple sources. Um, sorry, profile information that is extracted from multiple sources in view of our objective to integrate it. So um, this is the next point. How do we integrate the extracted information? So um, we are retrieving information from um, many services, many devices, and in many cases this is a problem because the user cannot really manage uh, all the data separately. They can, but at a cost. So um, what we try to do is to create a central access point for the management of all this distributed information. And for that, we need to integrate it. So before the integration itself, of course, we uh, uh, do what we perform what we refer to as semantic lifting. So basically, this is um, the lifting of structured, semi-structured, and even unstructured information from the sources onto the representations provided by the ontologies. Um, so the target information you already had an idea about. Um, the crawling itself from the devices, um, we have Aperture, which also was used in Nepomo. Plus that, we have a mobile device crawler. And there's also the online account crawling. So here we use XFarbu to transform um, service information retrieved, which is usually in our XML, and transform it into RDF, uh, and basically store it based on our ontologies. And um, the point of doing that is that Frequently, the user has a lot of information which is present in multiple places, such as documents or multiple devices uh, or images and so on. And also, um, in this slide, I focus a bit uh, more about the uh, federated user profile. So, a typical user has different profiles that they're expected to manage on different sources. So, of course, integration here will be useful. So, how do we do this at the moment? So. Um, of course, we are trying to determine some of the equivalents, so uh, there can be a profile of a person and a profile of another person. Uh, the user, the original user themselves might have uh, different information for each profile, but there are um, major similarities which allow us to determine that actually the person is the same. So we use uh, 
text analytics and uh, NLP techniques for um, determining similarity based on syntax, and we also explore semantic similarity. So how uh, similar are two items? So if, if you if you look at the picture there in the middle, there's the first information model le level. So the point is we have <coughs> different information from different points, but then it's integrated at the first information level. Meaning I have a person representation, for example, Simon in my uh, personal information model, and it refers to multiple profiles and different sources, for example. Um, <clears throat> so after that, uh, what are we using this information for? How can we exploit this information to give something of value to the user? So uh, in the next slides, um, I will give an overview of what we try to achieve. So the personal information management system uh, that we have right now. So we integrate information, allow the user to uh, manage it from one point, but we also try to uh, do more with this as well because we're extracting, for example, context information. So uh, we want the system to be context aware and um, allow also the user to define, um, for example, rules um, on top of the knowledge to um, give them suggestions during their day-to-day um, -day, um, activities. Um, so this picture here on the left hand side, um, you can see that the information is being um, gathered in this person information model, which is the second box from the top. And um, there's the reasoning box there with the bulb. Um, that's we are doing something with the information. And this of course, um, obviously we're doing enhanced search. So if the user, if, sorry, if the information is integrated, and it will become easier for the user to retrieve information, um, not direct, only directly, but also as suggestions, because the system will know what, is, what information is really lost when we are searching for something. Um, we also uh, have a component doing social-based recommendation. So the social aspect of, of the system is um, what I like, what you like, we're trusted uh, people, trusted network. So. Um, we can uh, see what uh, collaborative suggestions, uh, what your community might like if you're interested in an item. And um, we're also doing a couple of context aware, uh, offering context aware functionality, such as situation recognition. So a uh, typical user in a day to day life, they have repeat situations like going to work, being at work, uh, being in a meeting, uh, sleeping, and so on. And we are extracting a lot of context information, so we have the possibility to recognize uh, recurring situations. Uh, we have privacy warnings, also based on the context. Um, so the system, the user is able to define, uh, mark which information is more private. They have the possibility to uh, define trust on, for different contexts. So when they share information, they are going to get privacy warnings when they share sensitive information with what the system uh, determines to be unsafe even, for example. We also uh, suggest actions and um, this can be uh, bypassed to create automation as I showed. Um, so from these points here, um, the most, let's say, innovative features are the last, so the context server features. And this is what I will uh, dedicate the last uh, time of this presentation for, just to give you an overview of what we target. Um, so the next uh, slides are uh, technology which is currently being developed. It's not uh, yet um, implemented, so this is not um, working with the user work in product that we have, but it will be in the coming year. So first of all, we have context recognition. So as I said, we uh, represent context based on one of the ontologies that we all have, which is the context ontology. So um, we know uh, a lot of information about the user, where they are, who is around them, what connections are they are connected to, uh, the environment from device sensors and so on. And um, we store this at regular, regular times and through the user interface, the user will be able to uh, mark certain situations as interesting for them. For example, I can say I'm in a presentation now and um, I would like the system to realize when I'm in a presentation, I'm doing a presentation again. So we have this comparison. So all this information is stored as an RDF graph. So situations are stored by the user, uh, are graphs, and they're matched against one graph, which is the live context of the user, which is always changing in order to try and determine when a situation occurs. 
And based on this um, functionality, we uh, enabled more cool features, as I, as I will show shortly. Um, so this is how the current um, uh, prototype uh, UI looks like. So on the left, you have how the user would be able to mark the situation. So they could, the system detects what is of possible, uh, what is uh, characterizing the situation possibly. And the user can even, if they want to, uh, assign weights. So for example, the fact that I'm um, speaking and no one else is, uh, or the fact that I'm in this place, it can hint to the fact that I'm presenting at a conference, for example. So they can mark and replace these things, and of course then uh, the system automatically will match the current information against stored situations and suggest to the user what might be happening. And um, the second point that I will show briefly is uh, based on the information, based on the context information that's being realized, and not only, but uh, also about the information stored in the person information model, which is integrated. Uh, through the user interface, we want to allow the user to directly uh, um, define uh, context-driven rules, such as, I have two examples here, um, so these examples are based on the information from the ontologies. So for example, if the current location is a special instance which the user has saved before in their places called workplace, and the current situation is a special instance which is a situation which the user has saved before in a meeting, then uh, do something. In this, in this case, change the online presence. Or for example, if any person is nearby and that person's trust level is low, then notify the user, for example. So the items in blue are ontology classes, and uh, items in orange are instances. And yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to try and trying to give you an idea of what we're trying to achieve there. So the system functions as follows: these rules will be truly wide, defined by the user, and they are stores, stored as instances of the uh, one of our, our other ontologies, the rule management ontologies. And during runtime, they're uh, converted to Sparkle queries uh, for people who are aware of Sparkle here. And um, they are matched constantly against the uh, event log, which registers what the user is doing, where they are, context information, system uh, changes, and so on. And to try and uh, determine when a rule should fire and suggest in context uh, suggestions, privacy warning, <coughs> uh, recommendations, and even system actions such as uh, chain my online presence, for example, to the user. So um, this is the current user interface, which we have for uh, creating rules. This is, of course, work in progress here, and just uh, trying to give you a glimpse of what's coming in the future. And um, you, so you can see on the left-hand side, uh, there are three rules there, which the user has set. They're not very, uh, the text is not very clear, I suppose, but you can, the first one, for example, uh, it sends a picture to a friend if you're with the friends and you take a picture with your camera. So you get a suggestion, do you want to share this picture with these friends? Uh, for example, that, that's the real definition. Um, and um, that's it. Uh, I go to the summary. So because I know uh, in our community nothing is well known, I, and because we uh, you reuse a lot of ontologies from what was used in uh, Nepal, which are by now standards, and also some of the technology that was used there, such as, uh, as some aspects of the crawling. I uh, put a comparison of um, the innovation on top of Nepal, for example, that uh, our, the progress since, since then, uh, basically, of this project. So, with regards to, um, I'm starting from the bottom up. So with regards to personal information model integration, uh, Nepal of course started with the desktop. We target other services, social networks, and we also have information such as uh, user context and user histories. And with regards to personal information sharing, uh, we have a improved, let's say, focus on uh, secure sharing, trust levels, privacy levels for information. Uh, with regards to personal information management itself, uh, we have multi-source management, so it's not just the desktop but we integrate information from different uh, sources and try to map it uh, based on the derived semantics such that the user can have an overall view of their information in different places and maybe even reuse it from one place to the other without having to recreate it or edit it again. 
And with regards to the last point at the top there, uh, personal information support and awareness. So this is something completely new uh, to Dini. And um, <clears throat> basically the functions I was showing you, there uh, we have an intelligent user interface, which is driven by the ontologies, which uh, tries to uh, do all the cool functions that I was uh, trying to give you an idea of. And um, that's it, thank you. And um, as Fabian already mentioned, um, there's the boot upstairs, so if you want to see the current status of the prototype, um, just um, you're very welcome. And um, if you want to link to us on Facebook or Twitter or follow us, um, especially given the fact that in the next year the cooler features will materialize, then that would be great. So thank you very much. So maybe one short question. I might ask, uh, your system is doing a lot of things in real time. Uh, do you experience uh, res response time issues? Or? Yeah, that's an issue which we're um, starting to investigate now um, because, um, yes, this context recognition, for example, is um, not exactly constant, but yes, uh, so scalability issues, performance issues, issues are simply to be investigated, but we didn't do any evaluation yet. And um, we are targeting a lot of optimizations over, for example, um, for context recognition, uh, when to actually uh, try and match context uh, for the rules, when to actually um, keep candidate, candidate rules uh, that might be um, firing and so on. So there's a lot of optimization work going on, and there's a things that we're investigating, and that is something to keep an eye out in the future to see actually the results there. So if there are no, if there are no questions, uh, thanks to the speakers and to all speakers, and uh, enjoy the lunch.